my sport really showed me real strength and real power. And I remember that day where I looked in the mirror and I was happy with myself. Hey guys, it's Kirby. Welcome back to Pretty Unfiltered. Today my guest is Mia Kang. She is a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model, also a Muay Thai fighter. You don't know this, but I actually dabble in a little Muay Thai. Amazing. Um, I just started last December, so you're gonna have to like give me some, some pointers, okay? Okay, okay. Um, her life's mission is to empower women through body diversity, and she's very outspoken about this. This is the perfect platform for you to come and talk about it, so it I'm is. really glad that you're here. So thank, thank you for you. having me, thank of you. Of course. So I actually wanna start with modeling, because mm -hmm. you started modeling when you were 13. I did, and yeah. I'm actually really curious, looking back at your experience as a teen in the modeling industry, Industry. Is there anything that raises an eyebrow to you? Um, the whole thing, really. <laughs> the whole the whole experience. And I was introduced to the world so young, yep. right? And at the time, it was I just did everything that that they asked me to because I didn't realize that I had a voice or an opinion or anything else. I just did what I was told, um, and I conformed. And then it started to become normal. And the, nor the the modeling world that I was in, where you're judged on your appearance every day, where you're taking you know blunt criticism to your body all the time, and you have to pretend that you don't have feelings and needs and health and hunger and all these things, yep. you just have to ignore it. Modeling isn't the center of the universe and it isn't the be all and end all of my existence. Exactly. Um, it's just something that I do and I shouldn't be killing myself over something that I do, a job. Totally, right? I think that's a great perspective. Yeah. Okay, and then you got Sports Illustrated in, was it 2016? 2016 issue, I was in the model search, oh. which I won, mm -hmm. and then I had my rookie debut, 2017. Which is so crazy. And so crazy, I still think it's so crazy. But you've had a, such a full life, which is nuts, because you're not even 30. It's a gift and a curse, but I feel like I want to do it all. I feel like I want to do everything. I feel like I shouldn't have to make a choice. Women and people in general actually feel like they have to make a decision at an early age. What do you want to do? That's the one thing you want to do and you have to focus on that. I really think that we can do whatever the hell we want to do. So you took a six month hiatus from modeling to pursue yeah, Muay Thai. I did, yeah. I had like a, a little bit of a meltdown, um, <laughs> to be honest. I had a... I was under a lot of pressure from the modeling world. I was just not in a good place, to be honest. I was being asked crazy things, like to go on 10-day liquid-only diets before shoots, and oh Lord. you know, I was really killing my, my body and my mind, and I asked for a break. I said, I need 10 days vacation. Um, I went to my place in Thailand, and a 10-day vacation turned to actually almost nine months. Wow. I moved into the gym. I lived, breathed, slept, everything Muay Thai, and ended up Becoming a professional fighter. Which is insane because <laughs> you were just driving and you saw the gym, right? And yeah. you decided to get out and say, hey, can I try this? Yeah, I, dro I drove past it a couple times okay. before I before I built up the courage to, to go in, but I was like, what do you have to lose? So I'm curious, is this more of a male-dominated sport? Absolutely. So then how were you treated when you wanted to come in and say, hey, I want to do this? They were super welcoming and never ever made me feel inadequate or not capable. You know, throughout the days you feel the difference as a woman, even in terms of they have two separate wing, rings. Okay. One for women, one for men. Okay. W men can enter the ring however they like. Women must enter the ring under the ropes. It is what it is and I, I, I'm not bothered by that and as being Asian and growing up in Asia, it's the culture. Yeah, it's and a tradition. Yeah, right? it's like deeply ingrained in the culture, so I don't question it and I'm not offended by it. When was your first fight? Like when, and that was pro, right? Yeah. Okay, so how did you get to that point? I was training and they have promoters, matchmakers, that come around the different gyms to, to matchmake for fights and, uh -huh. and he approached me and he said, do you want to fight? And I said, do you think I can? And he said yes, and that gave me, that was a kind of realization for me. And then it was just a matter of finding the right time to do it, because obviously you have to go into fight camp, you have to train for a couple weeks before, and then allow some recovery time afterwards. It's hard having a full-time career, and then trying to do this at the same time, and the two things really don't fit well with each other. Totally, I so. was gonna say, I'm sure, you know, your agents for modeling, they might have been worried, like, wait, you're gonna fight someone? Yeah, they were worried. They were worried, but always super supportive. Which is um, Which is great, because they, they really watched this whole journey. They watched me go from, you know, really depressed, and watched me come back a, a new woman, and so they've always been super supportive. 
like after my fight when I had a black eye and I, you know, they were like, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> Send us a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, we need to see this. I'm kind of in awe of you because I think a lot of people, they hear your story and they, they, it's kind of what you touched on earlier, that you are capable of doing so many things and so many women are capable of doing so many things, right. but they don't actually articulate it like right. you j just said you did. Women, su we suppress it because we feel like, well, I'm already doing this and I'm a mom, I have two kids, you know, I, I can't run my dream business of owning a jewelry company or something like that. But you no, know, you absolutely can. We can never have enough strong female role models for other we women to look up to. And I think that we all lift each other up. Who has been one of your role models growing up then? Oprah Winfrey. That was really the one. That was the one for me. Why? I used to like run home from school to, to watch her show. <laughs> um, but it's at like a really young age. Me but too. I think what really hit me was where she came from. That all the odds were against her. Yep. Um, and I didn't have a, a, a I had a, a difficult upbringing. That was really like, not only can you succeed, but you can become one of the most powerful women on the planet. Oprah Definitely is my number one too. So I'm shout so out glad. to you, Oprah. Oprah, shout out, girl. To you. She was my background on my laptop for a very just a close up of her face. <laughs> I know that sounds really creepy. It sounds so creepy, but it made me so happy. She just says she's smiling ear to ear. Like <laughs> my phone screensaver for the longest time was this picture of her when she was first starting out. It's black and white, and she's sitting at a desk, and her feet are propped up on the desk. And oh, I'm like, I love this that. is a boss bitch. I, I love, love her. That. I know she's amazing. I love that. Oprah moment. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm curious, growing up in Hong Kong, what beauty differences did you notice uh, between American beauty standards and standards there? That's a great question. Asia has a very different standard of beauty um, and a very different aesthetic. It's a small framed woman, no muscular definition, mm. uh, curves are not a good thing, pale, pale, pale skin, the, the more pale the better, the big eyes and you know, the V-shaped chin and, and things like that. And growing up in that, I did not realize how much pressure it was, really. Yeah. And I remember, you know, being told that I was too big or being told that I needed to lose weight and things like that and, and fighting my natural body shape because I'm a, I'm a bigger, I'm tall, I'm a bigger, I have a much, much more Caucasian frame than an Asian frame. Mm -hmm. And I was fighting that my whole life because I felt that I had to conform to the standard of beauty that was in Hong Kong. And it's very common to have a lot of advertisements for slimming pills and wow. slimming laser things and I don't know what they are. Um, but that's just normal there because it's just be slim. So that like this word slim is just thrown around so much. And uh, I did a couple interviews out there, a couple of magazine covers and I said Hong Kong needs to catch up with yeah. the rest of the world. America is really leading this movement. Um, and I think that it will be a global, it will infiltrate global, globally for sure. So I'm excited. I'm excited for the, for Asia to get on board with this. And I think I really want to help and pioneer that movement. Okay, so then I'm curious, growing up in Hong Kong, having this pressure to look a certain way, then being a model at such a young age, how did you come to embrace and love your body? Since I can remember until last year, every single day I looked in the mirror and hated what I saw and was unhappy with something. It wasn't until I really discovered Muay Thai um, that I learned so much about myself and I got healthy and I got a metabolism back because I, I went through 15 years of every eating disorder you can imagine and full body dysmorphia. And I, you know, I threw myself into this sport. I really started to feel what health felt like and what strength felt like. And I was watching my body do these things that I never ever in my wildest dreams thought that I could do. Even simple things like doing a push up and being able to fight really showed me that I had strength and I felt good and I felt strong and I watched my body go through this transition where I was gaining weight and I was gaining muscle. You know, I'd gone up sizes, I'd gained a bunch of weight and I was okay with it and I'd fully embraced it and I was loving the changes and the differences and I felt so good and it, of course it's a struggle and it's a, you know, it's all a journey but my sport really showed me real strength and real power and I remember that day where I looked in the mirror and I was happy with myself. 
And really that taught me that that stems from the inside. That has absolutely nothing to do with what's on the exterior and what you look like. Being happy with yourself comes from within. All right, so knowing that you are confident in your body now, having found a love of this sport, tell me about your experiences in Sports Illustrated the first day and the second time. So the first year, I really went into it thinking that there was this ideal Sports Illustrated swimsuit model. And I had to be like that, and I had to, I, you know, I was trying to, to conform to that image and trying to look like that. The second year after, you know, I'd been through everything that I'd been through and I'd found this love for, for Thai boxing. And my body had changed. My body had changed a lot between the two years. Mm -hmm. And it was fully welcomed, embraced, and accepted by Sports Illustrated and encouraged. And they did nothing but encourage my, my fighting. And uh, it made me realize that it's not about the physical. It's about the woman that you are. And that really coupled with the fighting gave me the confidence to come back to the industry, come back to New York and to say, listen, f you guys, uh, this is me, this is who I am. For the first time in my life, I'm healthy, confident, I feel powerful, and this is the woman that we should be having in our magazines and on our billboards. This is who we should have as a role model for all the young girls out there that are looking at these images and feeling insecure about themselves. And something needs to change, and I will always try and be the change that I want to see. So when did you start becoming really outspoken about body diversity? When I came back to New York, I realized that I shouldn't be ashamed of anything that I, everything that I've gone through. And I think that every single woman that I've ever met in my life has insecurities. Yep. And we need to relate to each other and support each other and deal with this together because we're all going through the same thing and we all feel the same pressure. If I open up about my, my experiences and my stories, Maybe that'll affect, you know, a little girl out there, a woman out there uh, for the better. And honestly, growing up, if I had somebody that I could relate to that was open about it, maybe it would have changed things for me a little bit. Okay, so you're really outspoken about your work with 18 for 18. Mm -hmm. um, it's called 18 for 18 Project Rescue. So yes. can you talk a little bit about what that is and how maybe we can help? 18 for 18 Project Rescue is a charity organization that's set up to help women and children in the sex trafficking industry. Mm -hmm. Mainly in Southeast Asia, every year over one million women and children are sold into the sex trafficking industry mm -hmm. and as young as two years old. It's an organization that helps to not only rescue do rescue missions where they rescue women out of the sex trafficking industry mm -hmm. but also then to rehabilitate them and and make that transition into the normal world. So we can help by donating and we're gonna put everything, uh, the link to the website down below. Amazing. So please go donate, help please them donate, out. Please donate, guys. Yeah, thank you so much thank for coming you so on the much. show. I really enjoyed this conversation thank and learning you. more about you. Guys, let me know your favorite part of this interview. If you have any guest suggestions or topics that we haven't covered on the show that you would really like to see come to life, please, please, please message us, comment, or just hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. Just hit her up. Just hit, hit me up, just man. Just whatever. Just hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.